Transition Metals Chemistry In this module, we will talk about the general properties of the transition elements, their placement in the periodic table, and their specific properties which give them a unique recognition in the periodic table. The current slide gives a display of the modern periodic table. We know that the modern periodic table is divided into four blocks, S, P, D, and F. And the terminology of S, P, D, and F is given based upon in which valence orbital the last electron enters into the atom. Okay? So S block refers to the case where the last electron is being added to the NS orbital and similarly P block for NP, D block for N minus 1D orbital and F block for the N minus 2 F orbital. The modern periodic table consists of total 118 elements now. The, the last uh, uh, row of elements in the main part of the periodic table uh, of elements uh, is the newly added elements, is the list of newly added elements uh, which are synthetic one and whose uh, chemistry has not been explored much till now. So the discussion uh, for the transition metal chemistries in, uh, in this module will be restricted up to first three rows of the D block elements. The D block comprises of this part portion of the periodic table as shown in the previous slide also. It starts from group 3 to group 12, okay, from scandium till zinc and the groups following these elements. Uh, since the, uh, uh, the earlier study of the transition elements was restricted to first three series, so each group comprised of three elements and was termed as the triads. Okay. So, transition element uh, uh, triads were the groups referred to in the D-blocks. Let us concentrate on the first uh, uh, transition series. Remember that in the D-block uh, uh, of the periodic table, each period uh, starting from the group 3 till group 12, each period is termed as a transition series. So based upon whether it is the 3D orbital which is being filled, 4D orbital, 5D or 6D, these periods are termed as first transition series, second transition series, third transition series or fourth transition series. Alternatively, 3D series, 4D series, 5D series and 6D series. The elements in 3D series are scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, and zinc. Similarly, 4D series, which is the second transition series of D block in the periodic table, comprises of ytterbium, zirconium, niobium, molybdenum, technetium, ruthenium, rhodium, palladium, silver, and cadmium. 5D series contains lanthanum, hafnium, tantalum, tungsten, rhenium, osmium, iridium, platinum, gold, and mercury. While the last 60 series comprises of all synthetic elements, the radioactive ones, actinium, rutherfordium, dubnium, seaborgium, borium, hassium, mitnerium, dermastadium, rontinium, and coppenesium. Remember these elements now have the IUPAC nomenclature assigned to each of these elements, the last series. So, D block elements are termed as transition elements. The name has been given to them because they display a smooth transition of properties from S block to P block elements through D block elements. S block elements are highly electropositive elements, show 
metallic character p block elements are uh, much lower electropositivity or increased electronegativity elements and show properties of non metallic elements as well as some metalloids however the d block elements show much reduced metallic properties and start displaying a little bit of non metallic character okay predominantly they are all metals all d block elements are termed as metals but metals with much reduced metallic character as compared to s block elements d block elements are characterized by the incomplete d orbitals either in their atomic form or in their significant oxidation states okay and based upon that definition for the transition elements the last group of elements that is group 12 elements zinc cadmium and mercury should not be classified as transition elements as they have a completely filled d orbital configuration d10 configuration okay uh, but uh, uh, they are placed there as demanded by the uh, increasing atomic number uh, placement in the periodic table along with one important property which is shown by them which is unique to the transition elements and is not much uh, significant for other parts of the periodic table and that property is the complexation property zinc cadmium and mercury show complexation property a unique property of transition elements and therefore they are studied along with the transition elements but otherwise they do not display the properties significant of transition elements in other spheres so let's now talk about the general properties of the d block elements or transition elements the first one which we will discuss in this category will be the electronic configuration of these elements they all have the inner inner noble gas core followed by the n minus 1 d 1 to 10 and n s 2 configuration this is a general electronic configuration for this uh, group of elements though we will observe some exceptions some deviations from this general configuration first element scandium atomic number 21 will show an electronic configuration of inner argon core followed by 4s2 being filled first because according to our power principle 4s orbital is lower in energy than 3d orbital so first two electrons will go into the 4s and the third one will go into the 3d orbital so we'll have 3d1 4s2 configuration remember the d orbital which is being filled in the transition series is always the orbital prior to the valence orbital okay that is so if the fourth shell has started uh, filling here for the s orbital for d orbital it will be the third uh, shell d orbital titanium accordingly the second electron will go into the d orbital will have a valence electronic configuration of 3d2 4s2 so this trend will continue uh till uh, vanadium but we observe a anomaly at chromium the expected configuration for chromium should be 3d4 4s2 however the one which is observed is 3d5 4s1 so first thing which you can note here is that the paired electron in the 4s orbital has converted into one unpaired electron and that one electron from s orbital has moved to the 3d orbital to generate five unpaired electrons so in totality we have got now six unpaired electrons present here with a very marked electronic configuration of half filled d orbital now why this anomaly is observed here now this can be understood on the basis of uh, one uh, a fact that whatever we study in chemistry any kind of transformation which we study in chemistry is nothing but Uh, an interplay of energy requirement and energy release anomaly is being observed here it means some kind of energy is available 
to show this otherwise unstable oxidation state otherwise please mark it i'm saying otherwise unstable because we have a low energy forest orbital which is not being completely filled but we have got a little higher energy 3d orbital which has acquired this forest electron okay so uh, there is a there is a fine balance between the energy required and energy released now what is the energy required in this case the energy required here is the energy required to unpair the s electron ns electron pair and to excite one electron from 4s to 3d orbital now if this energy requirement is recovered compensated by any kind of energy output in this process then this unpairing and excitation will be observed now if you see here we have five unpaired d electrons present in 3d orbital because we have five d orbitals which are there so five electrons occupy each of the d orbitals singly with parallel spin now when these five d electrons are uh, present in d generator uh, orbitals they can easily shuttle Uh, in different d orbitals without any energy expense because all d orbitals are of same energy but this exchange of five electrons in these five orbitals result in release of energy which we call as exchange energy since there are maximum number of unpaired electrons present in 3d5 configuration the exchange energy released is high enough to compensate for the energy which was required to unpair the s electron and excite it to the 3d orbital as a result this configuration which should not have been there in first place that becomes stabler and the expected configuration is no longer visible so in uh, short we stated that the half filled or completely filled d orbitals will be associated with extra stabilization because of this extra exchange energy being released because of the exchange between electrons of parallel spin so we are observing this first anomaly at chromium then from manganese till nickel again we will be observing the expected configuration uh, the s electron for s orbital being filled completely and the additional electron going on to the d orbital however when we reach to copper the expected configuration is 3d9 4s2 but what we observe is 3d10 4s1 so this is because of the same reason associated with higher exchange energy owing to the electrons with similar spins in completely filled d orbital then zinc follows the normal expected configuration so let's have a look uh, about this let's see some of the uh, exceptional electronic configurations observed in 4d 5d uh, transition series as well the first one is group 5 group 5 is your uh, vanadium group because there are uh, 3d electrons vanadium does not show any anomaly in the uh, observed configuration however niobium the uh, 4d transition series element which is just below vanadium it uh, shows uh, uh, again a deviation from the expected configuration rather than d3 we have d4 configuration so one s electron has moved to d to give higher number of unpaired electrons resulting in higher exchange energy release now one can easily argue why this uh, uh, deviation is uh, observed in niobium and not in vanadium a uh, one probable explanation is that the energy difference between 3d and 4s is much higher as compared to the energy difference between 4d and 5s orbital so uh, the transition from s to d uh, uh, orbitals this uh, Uh, results in generation of greater number of unpaired electron and the energy uh, exchange energy released even with four unpaired electrons is high enough to offset the unpairing and excitation energy 
then we have group uh, six element which are the it is the chromium group chromium as we had discussed in the previous slide shows uh, a deviation from the expected configuration because uh, it has a stable half filled d orbital configuration giving the maximum exchange energy possible similar to chromium the element molybdenum from 4d transition series just below the chromium shows the same anomaly okay we observe 4d5 5s1 for group 8 which is the iron group iron does not show any anomaly but uh, ruthenium which is below iron does uh, uh, show the uh, the change in the observed configuration and that is uh, uh, d7 5s1 in fact you can notice here that in niobium or ruthenium we are not having the the stability associated with half filled d orbital but still the anomaly is being observed because it, it may be just at these elements the exchange energy is able to overcome the reduced amount of unpairing and excitation energy and therefore wherever the uh, possibility exists of uh, generating greater number of unpaired electrons and uh, the the anomaly is being observed then for group 9 rhodium displays the uh, anomaly by giving 4d8 5s1 group 10 anomaly is observed not only in 4d but in 5d series also okay and uh, for group 11 complete and uh, d9 changes to the completely filled d orbital configuration which is g10 4s1 here again we are seeing the anomaly in the 5d transition series element which is gold now one can easily see here that we are not observing the anomaly in the 5d uh, uh, transition series till group 9 this is because uh, if we go by the uh, the argument that the energy difference between n minus 1d and ns orbital is decreasing down the group that is that is applicable only to the 3d and 4d transition series but as we move from 4d to 5d we know that we have a whole group of lanthanides coming in between uh, just after the lanthanum so the presence of those inner f orbitals which are present in the lanthanides result in again decreasing the energy uh, of the s orbitals compared to the d orbitals more because s orbitals are more penetrating in nature which results in again an increased energy difference between the n minus 1d and ns orbital so anomalies are not observed again there because unpairing and excitation energy might become a little higher okay however when we are moving almost at the end of the d block so that uh, the elements platinum gold the effect of this f orbital they start becoming a little lesser here compared to the previous elements and the excitations can be seen here from s to d orbitals so the the reason for anomalies goes the same higher exchange energy released with greater number of d electrons with parallel spins wherever possible wherever this energy input of exchange and unpairing energy is recoverable through the exchange energy we will observe we have observed the uh, variation in the expected and the observed electronic configurations now let's talk about the second property of these transition elements which is the metallic character all these transition elements are good metals because they do have the uh, ns2 electron pair present in them which can be easily donated uh, to generate the dipositive cations easily apart from the ns uh, uh, electrons we do have n minus 1d electrons and multiple n minus 1d electrons depending upon which element we are talking about so the loss of these 3d or uh, n minus 1d electrons is also easier generating the cations with higher charge so they all are metals and the presence of these unpaired electrons makes them good conductors both thermal conductors as well as electrical conductors 
greater number of unpaired electrons. This conductivity is definitely expected to be higher than alkali metals or alkaline earth metals. The, the preceding S uh, uh, block uh, uh, in the periodic table because the number of uh, uh, unpaired electrons available there was much less, much lesser as compared to the T block elements. They all possess metallic clusters. They all are ductile, hard and strong. Okay. The strength as compared to the S block elements will be much higher here because now the metallic bonding which takes place in case of T block elements that will be formed by much higher number of valence electrons compared to S block elements. So greater the number of valence electrons available uh, for the metallic bonding, uh, higher will be the metallic bond strength and stronger and harder will be the metal will be the element. They all form alloys with each other easily. And that's uh, possible because uh, whenever we are forming the alloys, uh, they, uh, the elements tend to interpenetrate each other's crystals uh, without much distortions. Um, generating uh, uh, an alloy which has much improved and different properties than the parent metals. Okay. Uh, since transition elements are able to adopt uh, crystal lattices of almost all kind, okay, face centered cubic lattice, BCP, uh, sorry, BCC cubic lattice or HCP type of lattice, all uh, type of metal lattices do exist. So combination of one element with the other might result in formation of a very good alloy in case of transition elements. Elements which are from group 8 to 11, okay, they tend to crystallize in the face centered cubic lattice structure and they are much softer than the others which uh, crystallize in hexagonal close pack uh, structures or BCC type of structure. From group 8 onwards, uh, uh, the softness of the, uh, the metal is attributed again to the variation in the number of unpaired electrons now. You can see from scandium till manganese, that is till group 7, the number of unpaired electrons in d orbitals is continuously increasing. At manganese, we have D5 configuration. Five unpaired electrons are present. Okay, but from manganese to iron, this D electron starts pairing up. And this pairing in the d orbitals results in lesser number of free d electrons available for showing those metallic properties. And one of those properties is the metallic bonding. So number of d electrons are decreasing, extent of metallic bonding starts decrease, decreasing, strength of the metal therefore decrease or the metals become softer. Oxidation states of these elements. Again, this is important though uh, th this uh, uh, property is shown by P block elements also. Uh, D orbital, uh, sorry, D block elements, that is the transition elements, display multiple oxidation states. And those multiple oxidation states again are attributed to the presence of D orbitals and the less energy uh, difference between dn minus 1 d and ns orbitals so it becomes uh, easier to remove d electrons even after removal of the ns electrons the first transition series it uh, uh, displays oxidation states almost all possible oxidation states for these elements except few the only one electron present in uh, the chromium and copper it results in generation of a stable copper 1 oxidation state. Chromium doesn't display a stable plus 1 oxidation state, but copper does. Cuprous ions are easily formed because the resulting 3D10 completely filled uh, configuration is quite stable. Then 
the very first uh, impression which we will have about these elements is that they will be easily losing all their ns electrons so since there are two electrons present in the 4s orbital all elements are expected to display a plus 2 oxidation state okay and they do display plus 2 all with a quite a, a good stability except scandium okay for scandium plus 2 oxidation state as soon as it is formed it gets shifted into the uh, turn, converted into the plus 3 oxidation state because the removal of two electrons from scandium uh, followed by the removal of third electron from the results in a completely filled noble gas core okay and uh, the previous one sorry not the noble gas core uh, the previous orbital filled uh, configurations and uh, that makes the conversion from plus 2 to plus 1 much easier okay generating scandium 3 plus cation for zinc breaking a 3d10 core becomes much difficult uh, uh, situation and zinc does not display variable oxidation state then for titanium there are total four electrons in 3 uh, 3d and 4s collectively so plus 4 is easily displayed copper cannot show oxidation state beyond plus 3 even for copper plus 3 oxidation state is not a very common oxidation state we will be observing this stabilization of plus 3 oxidation state only in certain kind of complexes okay Uh, for nickel plus 4 is uh, uh, shown you can in fact see for the elements on the right though they are displaying the higher oxidation states the the stabilization of those higher oxidation states will require some special environments similarly plus 5 plus 5 co for cobalt becomes quite unstable strongly oxidizing in nature plus 6 easily shown from chromium to iron again iron plus 6 com, com, uh, seen in complexes some kind of complexes not as a common oxidation state and for manganese plus 7 is quite sta uh, stable though strongly oxidizing such kind of oxidation pyramid can be seen for uh, 4d and uh, uh, 5t transition series as well now these d electrons uh, which are uh, present in these uh, transition elements are quite active as compared uh, 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 whenever uh, uh, the involvement in bond formation is uh, considered say from scandium to man uh, manganese we have uh, 1 2 5 d electrons which are present all s and all d electrons are used in bonding okay and uh, in fact uh, the elements from scandium to manganese do resemble the main group elements s block elements in some of their oxidation states as well okay and not only in s block uh, some some from the p block as well for example sulfate and chromate are isostructural okay Uh, both are tetrahedral species and in fact uh, chromate ions act as uh, a toxic replacement of sulfate ions in the biomolecules silicon tetrachloride and titanium tetrachloride are isostructural so many properties of these elements do resemble the other main bro, uh, group uh, elements compounds also from iron onwards we have the electronic configuration ranging from d6 to d10 so d electrons have started pairing up now and it will not always be easy to involve these all d electrons in the bonding so the number of d electrons participating in bonding will now be decreasing so the maximum oxidation state which will now be displayed will not uh, match with the total number of electrons present in the 3d and 4s orbitals now Uh, in in fact in the second and third transition series uh, ruthenium and osmium they do show higher oxidation state plus or eight oxidation state but for iron it is not possible
stability. Another property to discuss about transition elements is their atomic and ionic sizes and ionization energies. As a regular uh, periodic uh, property, size tends to increase from top to bottom and uh, decrease from left to right across the period. Okay. That is what we observe here in case of transition elements as well. Size decrease from say scandium till copper as a regular group trend because electrons are being added here in the inner d orbital. D orbital we all know are quite diffused, very less penetrating and therefore very poor shielding in nature. Addition of electron in the valence orbital at each step is also resulting in a simultaneous addition of proton at the nucleus. So from left to right, the nuclear charge is constantly increasing, but this increased nuclear charge is not provided any shielding by the inner uh, d orbitals. Okay, so that results in the decrease in the size from scandium till copper, but from copper to zinc size again increase because the full capacity of d orbitals is reached and interelectronic repulsions are now able to expand the size. From top to bottom variation within group the size should increase as a regular group trend and that regularity is observed in the first triad scandium, yttrium and lanthanum. Size is regularly increasing but after first group as, as soon as we move to the titanium group that is group 4 the anomaly in this size variation starts being displayed. We do observe from 3D to 4D series an increase in size of about 0.1 to 0.2 angstrom. However, from 4D to 5D series, the size hardly increases. It's almost constant. And this is a consequence of lanthanide contraction. From lanthanum to hafnium, in between these two elements, we have a full 14 element series coming in between which is the lanthanide series and they have apart from the d orbitals they also have now the much inner 4f orbitals again poor shielding in nature and resulting in much increased uh, uh, nuclear charge and resulting in contraction of the atomic size because valence shell is drawn more closely towards the nucleus uh, as a result of this increased nuclear charge. So from 4D to 5D series, we hardly observe any increase in the size. Ionization energies and electron affinities decrease slightly only across the series. They do not vary too drastically as we are observing, say, in case of S2P. Okay, So there is a decrease observed along the series, but that decrease is not proportionately very high. Okay. Then these transition elements are quite dense elements. They are dense elements again because their atomic sizes are quite uh, less compared to the alkali metals or alkaline earth metals that is the S block elements. The reason the culprit again the presence of the d orbitals because nuclear charge is not shielded though the mass of the atom is increasing its volume is not increasing too high. So they always end up having higher densities and the densities are generally greater than 5 gram per cc except scandium and yttrium. These densities again they are decreasing from top to bottom. Okay, Second row elements have almost twice the density of first row elements. Osmium and iridium are the two elements of the D block which have the highest densities in the whole periodic table uh, ranging from 22.57 to 22.67 gram per cc. These elements since they are much harder much uh, stronger than S, in, uh, S block elements we expect them to have much higher melting points 
obviously compared to the S block elements. They have uh, melting points as high as 1000 degrees Celsius, uh, except lanthanum and silver, which are low melting, okay, compared to uh, 1000 degrees. Zinc, cadmium, and mercury are exceptionally low, okay. These are the last group of elements, uh, group 12, uh, completely failed D10 configuration. They, are, they have such a low melting point that mercury is in fact the liquid at room temperature and we can very well um, understand why they are having the higher melting points because the greater number of D electrons up to manganese results in a very strong metallic bonding resulting in higher melting points. However, from iron onwards, including iron, uh, the number of D electrons are uh, decreasing, the strength decreases and at zinc, cadmium and mercury, since all D electrons are paired up, metallic bonding is very weak compared to the previous element, group of elements, they have exceptionally low melting points. Now, this is something very unique, color of transition metal uh, compounds, uh, a property which makes them stand uh, apart from S and P block elements because most of the elements of S block in the elemental state are not colored. Uh, their compounds are not colored except few. For P block elements, uh, majority of the compounds are uh, not colored except few again. However, for transition metal uh, compounds, we have uh, a wide range of colors uh, possible for almost every type of transition metal compound. And there are three phenomena responsible for the uh, color origin in the transition metal compounds. The first phenomena is the polarization. And we can in fact, the, these three origins can be divided on the basis of what is the type of the D electronic uh, configuration, D orbital configuration. For the compounds containing the transition element with completely filled D orbitals, we observe polarization phenomena. When we have incomplete filled D orbitals, we observe DD transitions. And when we have the no D electron present as such, D0 configuration, we observe charge transfer transitions. Okay, so uh, let us discuss the first case, which is the polarization process. We should understand why do we observe the color in any uh, chemical compound. It is because within certain atoms, either in the, uh, in, in, in the molecular orbital uh, stage we can talk about or in the uh, we can talk about the atomic orbital of the central atom, there are electronic transitions taking place. Electrons from one lower energy orbital is, is jumping to the higher energy orbital, which we call as the excited state. From ground state to excited state, this jumping requires energy. The energy, if it is available in the visible region of the light, the normal white light, if that transition can take place, de excitation process will release, will uh, emit the same absorbed energy now in the visible region. Now, if there are no d electrons present uh, which can undergo excitation, for example, in D10 configuration, then all the electrons are paired up. Remember, electronic transitions take place with unpaired electrons. So in D10 configuration, we have all paired electrons and it is not easy for any unpaired electron, for any paired electron to show transitions. So ideally, there should not be any transition in case of uh, the uh, copper, silver, gold compounds where D10 configuration is observed in the plus one oxidation state. But we do observe silver bromide. Here, silver is silver plus iron, okay? So, Ag plus, Ag plus is 4D10 configuration. That is pale yellow in color. Silver iodide is yellow. You have observed this color on your own when you have done the uh, test for the halide ions in your chemistry laboratory. 
and that's one of the test silver nitrate test you have observed the yellow color there silver carbonate silver phosphate they are yellow in color silver oxide silver sulfide are black in color silver chromate is dark in uh, is red in color silver chromate you must have observed in your uh, 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 chemistry lab again where you would have done the precipitation titrations involving uh, silver nitrate so from where this color is originating if transitions are not possible within the uh, transition metal ion now understand the uh, the bonding in these compounds silver bromide silver iodide silver carbonate the silver bond with the uh, with the anion ag plus ion is a highly polarizing ion because it is in a 3d10 configuration so the, it's it's polarizability uh, its polarizing power is very high it tends to polarize the anionic electronic cloud now how does this polarization lead to color within the molecule if we visualize it as the electrons now from the molecular orbital which are more anion like are shifting to the metal orbitals which are more cationic like okay so this polarization process is resulting in that absorption of energy from the visible region and imparting color to the uh, transition metal compound silver compounds here fine so that's how the polarization process is leading to the color in these compounds let's talk about the a uh, second case where the incomplete field t orbitals are there it means configuration ranging from d1 to d9 where at least one d electron is present for the transition okay uh, we will talk about this concept more in the coming modules where we will be talking about the coordination compounds but just to understand uh, it in a very uh, plain sense all 5d orbitals are of same energy so movement of d electrons from one orbital to another orbital will not require any energy we have just seen that in case of the exchange energy process so if the d orbitals remain degenerate this dd transition concept is not applicable whenever this transition metal ion is surrounded by any anion which can perturb the energy of these d orbitals can make them split into two different set of orbitals which are of different energies then dd transitions can take place and impart color that is electrons from one lower energy d orbital will jump to higher energy d orbital from that split up group we will deal with this particular concept in detail later on again okay. third is the charge transfer now consider the cases where the transition metal ion is in highest possible oxidation state involving all d and s electrons for example chromium in plus 6 oxidation state chromium has d5 s1 configuration so all six electrons are involved so chromium plus 6 means essentially there is no d electron available for electronic excitations Mangan permanganate ion in which manganese is in plus seven oxidation state. If essentially no d electron present in manganese to allow that electronic transition. Vanadyl ion, dioxovanadium ion, where vanadium is in plus three oxidation state. Uh, sorry, plus five oxidation state. So all uh, vanadium electrons are utilized, and there is no free unpaired electron. which is available for excitation in such special cases we observe the color chromate ion is yellow in color dichromate is orange permanganate is purple dioxovanadium ion is again uh, yellow in color all these colors are originating now from charge transfer charge transfer transitions here in this case from the anion to the metal ion now understand what charge transfer transition is it is similar to that electronic transition in in normal electronic transitions we are talking about say 
the metal d orbitals from one uh, one d orbital of uh, lower energy electron is absorbing the energy from the visible region undergoing excitation to the higher energy d orbital followed by d excitation the orbitals are belonging to the metal but in charge transfer what is happening we have the molecule as a whole we have the orbitals carrying the electron density essentially in the molecular orbitals which are of anionic in nature and we have the metal orbitals now which are vacant metal d orbitals are completely vacant okay so the electrons are now electron density shifting from those anion like metallic orbit uh, uh, molecular orbitals to the vacant metal d orbitals okay and this only happens when the energy difference between these two is very less and this is not a permanent transfer of electron from anion to the metal because if it is a permanent transfer it will be a redox reaction this is just an excitation followed by the excitation okay a small amount of energy is it uh, absorbed from the uh, anion like orbitals and electron jumps to the metal like orbitals and then again d excites back to the anion like orbital okay since this requires a very small amount of energy the the requirement usually falls in the visible region and the ease of transitions is reflected in the high intensity of these Uh, of of the colors in these compounds you must have seen the color of permanganate how intense it is just a small drop of a, uh, a permanganate solution uh, it tends to create a whole bucket of water pink so the intensities are very high the next property which is uh, again uh, quite uh, observable for transition elements is the magnetic properties of these uh, of uh, either in the elemental state or in the uh, in their compounds and uh, we know that magnetic properties arise from the presence of unpaired electrons and they have a large number of unpaired d electrons present in the uh, either in the atomic or in the uh, ionic state in the compound state they tend to display magnetic properties these transition elements display all paramagnetic ferromagnetic anti ferromagnetic properties and ferromagnetic and anti ferromagnetic properties are actually the temperature dependent properties for these uh, transition elements the magnetic moments uh, reflect uh, the number of unpaired electrons and vice versa the number of unpaired electron will again uh, control the magnetic moment being displayed for that element we can calculate the magnetic uh, um, moment spin only mag this is spin only magnetic moment the formula which has been given here which is under root of 4s into s plus 1 where s is the total spin uh that that will be dependent upon the total number of unpaired electrons so if i convert spin into the number of unpaired electrons by replacing s with n by 2 i'll have the formula under root n into n plus 2 where n represents the number of unpaired electrons many a times we do observe the anomalies in the observed magnetic moment and the calculated magnetic moment okay uh, and uh, uh, that that anomaly can be very well explained depending upon the environment in which that particular metal ion is there we will again deal with this property in detail in the coming modules catalytic properties again a unique property associated with the transition elements they and these elements either in the elemental state uh, atomic state or in the uh, compound state they act as excellent catalysts some of them uh, to be uh, given here as an example zieglernata catalyst is a titanium compound 
Vanadium pentoxide finds its uh, large applications in the contact process, which involves the uh, conversion of sulfur dioxide into sulfuric acid. Manganese dioxide, it is used for production of oxygen by decomposition of potassium chlorate. Fenton's reagent is a combination of ferrous sulfate and hydrogen peroxide, which is used for oxidation of alcohols to aldehydes and palladium chloride find its application in Baker's process. These are just few. Uh, you might be coming across a large number of uh, uh, transition metal compounds when you are studying the organic chemistry. What is the reason for the uh, catalytic properties of these elements uh, or in their compounds? In the elemental form, it is easily understood since they can form fine powder. They have a large surface area available and therefore can have a large number of reactants being adsorbed on the surface. And their reactivity is not as high as the S block element that uh, the moment we powder them, they will undergo oxidation or hydrolysis. No, the, these elements uh, uh, can be safely used for the catalysis of the organic reactions. What about their compounds? Compounds are able to show their um, Catalytic property not owing to the large surface area, but owing to the tendency of the transition element to display multiple oxidation states with ease. That interconversion of one oxidation state into another with ease imparts very specific catalytic properties to these uh, class of compounds. Okay, uh, binding of substrate become easier. Okay, so that variable valency becomes one of the major reasons for the catalytic uh, properties observed in these compounds. The catalytic role of these transition elements is so remarkable that they have been selected by nature in the uh, living systems. Most of the metalloenzymes, they have transition elements at the core, at the active site of that metalloenzyme. Okay. And depending upon what is the property of the transition element, specific roles are being assigned to those metalloenzymes by the nature. Okay. Specific uh, uh, reactions are being catalyzed. The compounds of transition elements, not complexes, I'm talking about the general uh, compounds like oxides, uh, selenides, sulfides, they are, are uh, non-stoichiometric compounds. Now, in, in most of the circumstances, we do observe the uh, very well-defined stoichiometry for the compounds. A combines with B in a fixed ratio, irrespective of wherever it is found in the universe, that particular compound will have that composition. They are termed as stoichiometry. But in case of transition elements, we do observe non stoichiometry quite common, commonly, and uh, that's because the, the interpenetration of uh, the metal ions uh, into the host lattice of the anion, occupying the void spaces, leaving some void spaces, moving on to the other type of the holes. There might be, you know, all type of uh, crystal defect structures you must have studied in your uh, metallic uh, solid state uh, uh, studies in your uh, first year modules. So non stoichiometry is quite common in case of the transition elements and their compounds. They tend to form interstitial compounds. Interstitial compounds uh, are uh, formed by transition elements which are generally very small in size, okay? Uh, uh, with, with the elements which are generally small in size, for example, hydrogen, boron, carbon, and nitrogen, because these small sized non-metals are able to occupy the voids in the host transition metal lattice, okay? Now, this is not a, a type of, say, uh, direct bonding between a uh, metal atom and uh, and the non-metal in some specified ratios. It, these are the interstitial compounds where the, the non-metal is occupying the 
positions in the metallic lattice interstitial spaces in the metallic lattice this invasion into the metallic lattice results in changes in the structure of this whole uh, host metal and therefore now the resulting assembly will be having quite different properties than the parent host metal they are generally non stoichiometric remember okay because there might be a variation in the number of interstitial spaces which can be occupied by these small non metals now again a unique in property observed for transition elements though we or though we observe complexation to some small extent for s block elements also and some of the p block uh, uh, metalloid uh, metalloids uh, but the extent to which these transition elements display complexing ability is unparalleled most of the time if the if the metal ion which is uh, forming the complexes is small in size whether in the atomic or in the ionic uh, state it will prefer complexation okay that small size will ensure that it has a higher charge density but apart from that small size and higher charge density we need to have the availability of vacant orbitals so these transition elements have vacant t orbitals present in them and these vacant orbitals are able to accept the electron density from the approaching ligands and therefore tend to end up forming these coordinate bonds from ligand to the transition metal if we talk about valence bond theory or a ionic interactions between the uh, ligand and the metal ion based upon crystal field theory the resulting compounds called complexes which are being formed are extremely stable and the stability varies depending upon which ligand is binding to the transition metal line the colors may vary depending upon which ligand is binding to the uh, the which type of transition metal line a totally unique class of compounds which are being formed now we can have a little comparison of 3d series with 4d and 5d series for 3d series the aquines are quite stable for di positive and tri positive ions however for 4d and 5d series the aquines are not quite stable for 4d series and 5d series higher oxidation states generally become much stabler than the lower oxidation states for example if we compare titanium and zirconium titanium 3 is not a good reducing agent as good reducing agents as zirconium 3 will be iron 8 will not exist at all but osmium uh, in plus 8 oxidation state will exist 3d the elements which form the 3d series are quite abundant but 4d and 5d series elements have much lower abundance in general okay uh, 3d series elements uh, they tend to achieve a maximum coordination number of up to 6 however 4d and 5d series elements owing to their larger size than 3d series can form compounds with coordination number up to 8 a very high crystal field stabilization energy is associated with the coordination compound of 3d series as compared to 4d and 5d series which has lower crystal field stabilization energy crystal field concept of bonding in coordination compounds will be another module which we will be dealing later on